Five times bigger than the Titanic, this is what the newest cruise ship looks like today, and it's booking out fast. The cruise industry is the most rapid-growing tourism sector, generating billions. We visited Cozumel in Mexico to see what all the fuss is about. We wanted to know what literally powers this multi-billion dollar industry. On this episode of Transforming Business, we're rocking the boat. Things used to be different. Cruising was a fancy affair. Yes, there were swimming pools and first-class dining, but the liners themselves were a lot smaller. They carried around 3,000 passengers per trip, and overall the industry was marked by a certain refinement and manner. Now, here we are today. This is the largest cruise ship ever built. It's called Icon of the Seas and measures 365 metres long and can carry 10,000 people at a time, just over three quarters of those passengers. Icon of the Seas is reflective of the rise and rise of a booming cruise industry. This ship has just launched and is already open for reservations in 2025. Cruise passenger numbers globally are set to hit 36 million this year, and that figure is expected to continually increase. But what's literally powering all of this? Technically, in the case of Icon of the Seas, it's liquefied natural gas, or LNG. It's seen as a more environmentally friendly fuel. More on that later. We asked its owners, Royal Caribbean, for an interview on its sustainability strategy. A representative from the company never materialised within our deadline. But we did manage to get hold of Carnival Corporation, the biggest cruise company in the world. One of its slogans, sustainable from ship to shore. We recognise we have a, a, a need to maintain a pristine environment so, because that's what people come to see. They don't, they don't want to go see you know, things that have deteriorated. They want to see beautiful places and, and we try to take them there. That's Bill Burke, who's charged with making Carnival a safer company for the environment. Here are the top five cruise ports in the world. Every year, millions of people visit. Port Miami in the US tops the list. We travel to the Mexican island of Cozumel in the Caribbean Sea. It's part of one of the largest barrier reefs in the world. Cruise is gives you actually the opportunity to visit many different islands um, throughout your seven days. You can hit so many different ports. The ships are amazing and there's so many things to do on them. You go in the cruise for one week and you can spend 1,000, 2,000, but you have everything. We did our own internet search and found that you can actually get a week-long cruise to the Caribbean for around $635, plus taxes and port fees. And under the trendy banner of sustainable tourism or climate consciousness. In fact, one study says that half of all Americans believe cruise holidays are environmentally friendly. And this green badge is worn proudly by the top three cruise companies, Carnival, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian. Norwegian is trying out biofuel mix blends and continues to use marine gas oil. In the longer term, it sees green methanol as a promising source of power. Carnival and Royal Caribbean continue to use traditional fuels and they both tout the current use of LNG. It is the best fuel available today for us to use from a greenhouse gas perspective. And we pioneered that within the industry. Carnival has nine LNG ships with two more on order. And when they're all on stream, or on shore rather, the guest capacity of those 11 ships will represent 20% of its fleet. That's a significant investment in a fossil fuel. The company's first LNG-capable vessel is reported to have cost $950 million to build. But I guess being the world's biggest cruise company, Carnival has the money to burn. Literally. The cruise industry is expected to generate revenue to the tune of just over $30 billion this year. In 2027, the indicator is that this figure will jump to almost $36 billion. And the region's cruise ships stop at also benefit. A study from the cruise industry body says that passengers alone spend about $100 at visiting cruise ports. In Cozumel, local businesses sing the praise of the cruise sector in chorus. Undoubtedly, the cruise industry is the one that brings the most benefit to the island. We also have national tourists, but what gives us the most impact is the international cruise. 
de, 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 que viene de, de internacionalmente, claro. El turismo el the cruise turismo tourism to Cozumel is 90% of the reason we have jobs on the island. In the particular case of Cozumel, we are approaching $400 million in economic benefits for a population that does not reach 200,000 inhabitants. But what are the hidden costs? According to one study, cruising is more than double the carbon emissions of flying and staying in a four-star hotel. Various cities, including one of Europe's busiest ports, Barcelona, have moved to restrict cruise ships because of their emissions. Norway has also announced that from 2026, only vessels with zero emissions will be allowed to visit its fjords. It follows research that claims cruise liners in Europe emit as many toxic air pollutants as one billion cars. After Venice banned large cruise liners from anchoring in its historic site, it's reported that air pollutants fell by 80%. But hold on, shouldn't the move to using liquefied natural gas solve all of this? No carbon there, right? The easiest way to comply with the regulations on sulfur, nitrogen oxides and carbon dioxide intensity all at the same time is to use liquefied natural gas because it contains almost no sulfur, and um, it emits about 25% less carbon dioxide emissions than conventional fuels. Brian Comer is not convinced about liquefied natural gas being used in the shipping sector. You see, LNG is made up of methane, a gas that doesn't stay in the atmosphere as long as carbon dioxide, but is 80 times more warming for our planet in the short term. And what's interesting about maritime companies using LNG is this. Many of them are choosing liquefied natural gas as their fuel. And the engines that cruise ships use tend to be those that emit the most amount of unburned methane to the atmosphere. And we call that methane slip. This infrared camera shows a ship burning LNG. The clouds you see illustrate the methane that's escaping. The methane slip. The more methane, the bigger the cloud. The cruise ship industry emits about 30 million tons of greenhouse gases each year. And that's the same as 75 natural gas powered power plants would emit each year. For environmentalists here in Cozumel who oppose cruise ships, they see a cull on the sector as critical. There are photographs where a diver appears with a quantity of resources under his feet. Sea turtle, lobster, grouper, a large number of fish that were there in those times. That photograph was what sold Cozumel to tourism. And now we don't have that. Back to the question of what's powering this multi-billion dollar industry. Well, it's clearly demand. Just look at the size of Icon of the Seas. Yet it's run on LNG, a fossil fuel made up of methane, one of the drivers of global warming. But whatever fuels that are being used, it's clear they're in flux as the industry grapples with the warming planet and tries to colour in between the lines. For the more formidable lines, however, those of our environment, we might already be over the edge. We don't want any more cruises in Cozumel. The community opposes cruise ships. Would you take a cruise? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked this episode, please check out the Transforming Business playlist for videos on topics just like this one.